Uh, as uh, you can see, the biodiversity in this room, uh, country-wise, is uh, quite high. Uh, so this is uh, this is really good because this is the basis. Uh, I mean, you are stakeholders of, of nature-based solutions from all different aspects from your profession and what you are doing. Uh, so uh, this is what we wanted to achieve by trying to bring you all uh, here. So. Uh, what I would like to do is uh, give you a kind of a brief uh, overview of uh, what we have done in uh, the project uh, called Thin Nature. Uh, so basically the title of Thin Nature was the development of a multi-stakeholder dialogue platform and think tank to promote innovation with uh, nature-based solutions. So basically uh, the objectives that we had in the project was uh, the development of uh, a multi-stakeholder communication platform that will support the understanding and the promotion of nature-based solutions at the different levels, local, regional, EU, and international. Uh, we wanted the Think Nature platform to bring together multidisciplinary scientific expertise, policy, business, society, as well as citizens, and it will create a wide interactive society that builds new knowledge. So basically, uh, the two aspects of the objective was uh, the multi-stakeholder communication platform, and the second was the promotion of nature-based solutions. So uh, this is uh, uh, what we call a coordination action uh, project. And uh, basically, it is a synthesis and of uh, the work that is being done uh, by European projects and all over the world that uh, we would like to try to bring things uh, together. Uh, I will start with uh, the definition of uh, thing, uh, uh, nature, uh, of nature-based solutions. Uh, just to uh, set the stage of, uh, and of course this definition you're going to see it again and again and again. So these are living solutions. Okay. inspired or, and supported by nature that simultaneously provide environmental, social, economic benefits and help to build resilience. So this is the background. It's a living solution. This is what I would call uh, the nature. Nature is the grand engineer. So uh, if we learn from nature, then we will be able to try to um, um, have uh, multiple benefits uh, from the solutions that we have. So this is, uh, these are solutions that they bring more nature and natural features and processes into the cities, the landscapes, the seascapes, through locally adapted resources, uh, resource efficient and systemic intervention. So the problem that uh, we have is that uh, in the European Union is that even though the uh, nature-based solutions as a concept has been integrated horizontally in all of uh, the uh, legislation. Uh, the uptake uh, by the cities, uh, by scientists and uh, managers is uh, lacking. So the question is why? And what can we do to be able to overcome uh, this particular issue? So uh, when we were starting uh, uh, Think Nature three years ago, uh, we were having a vision, okay? And uh, the vision is that uh, uh, we believe that uh, nature-based solutions, and uh, that was from the work that we were doing in our practice and from all of the partners.
Um, so basically, we believe uh, that uh, uh, nature-based solutions can make a difference in achieving sustainable development. Uh, here I have an example, and uh, this example is uh, uh, a project that it was uh, uh, it was uh, uh, designed uh, many years ago is uh, to revitalize Athens. If you have been uh, in Athens, in uh, the center of Athens. One of the things that they wanted to do is in order to revitalize Athens between the two major squares, the Constitution Square and uh, Omonia Square, uh, it was uh, to try to create uh, um, a, a more livable space with a lot of green, with a lot of water and so forth. Uh, this was the project Rethink Athens. Uh, this is a tremendous project and you can think that the value of the property around uh, the center of Athens is going to increase tremendously if uh, something like this uh, happens. The question is, it hasn't happened. Of course, it hasn't happened because uh, uh, we, the Greek government was in a crisis the past uh, few years. They didn't have the money to try to invest in a project like this. The question is, why haven't the individuals who own the property around been able to invest so their own property to increase? What are the stumbling blocks of implementing something like this and redesigning the cities and looking a little bit ahead to try to make sustainable cities? So uh, this kind of a picture is what uh, makes us uh, believe that uh, nature-based solutions uh, can address societal uh, challenges. They, cannot, uh, they can be the catalyst for urban renewal. Uh, they can be a new mode of operation uh, for uh, uh, innovative solutions, okay? And uh, so basically the question is, uh, can we show people that uh, implementing nature-based solutions, uh, it can be, uh, they have a business case to show that actually they can, uh, in the long term, profit from it. So, uh, we will discuss this uh, uh, at different presentations, but uh, this concept of nature-based solutions is not uh, new. It has started more than uh, 15 years ago from 2002, and it has evolved. And only in uh, 2015, it became the core of uh, the EU research and innovation uh, policy, and they are really supporting uh, uh, this uh, concept of uh, nature-based solutions. So, uh, in the past three years, we are at the end of the project, in uh, the end of November. Uh, I think that uh, we have, uh, uh, as uh, a project, uh, I can uh, summarize the results of the project in uh, four different categories. Uh, the first, and I will show you each one of them, is uh, the Think Nature platform. Uh, many of you are members, and I urge you that uh, you become members of the Think Nature platform. Uh, and I will explain to you what we have in there. Uh, second is uh, uh, the stakeholder engagement. We have done a lot of uh, activities uh, to brainstorming forums, uh, analysis and, uh, on policy and the landscape on uh, barriers uh, that uh, we engage uh, stakeholders uh, to try to build this uh, network. Uh, the next one is uh, uh, the capacity building and uh, this summer school is part of the capacity building. <coughs> Obviously, for people to use nature-based solutions, you need to provide to them the science case as well as the business case, okay? To show that uh, uh, you have uh, uh, all of the knowledge to be able to design and implement nature-based solutions, you are able to overcome the barriers. And we will show you a lot of examples as we go through these uh, five days. And then the last one is uh, the business case of uh, MBS, and we'll be presenting you, to you uh, some, uh, uh, in the, both uh, uh, to show you that uh, it is worth it to implement, and in the long term it's going to be very useful. So I will start with uh, the Think Nature platform. Basically, uh, we imagine this platform as a hub of uh, getting uh, in the information that we need and trying to connect the different uh, projects that the European Union has been supporting and also projects outside the, the European Union. So basically in this hub uh, we have the uh, parts of the hub that uh, they are uh, open to everybody and the hubs, uh, the part of the hub that it is uh, uh, you have to log in uh, in order to be able to uh, participate and get information from there. 
So uh, basically, um, you can get uh, news, events, social media, and uh, the networking uh, uh, hub. Uh, you can uh, see that we have more than 670 uh, uh, people that they are uh, part of uh, the uh, that they are part of the platform. Uh, you can connect with them. They are from all over the uh, all over the world, and uh, they have experience like uh, you do on applying nature-based uh, solutions. Uh, one of the important things uh, uh, that it is open is uh, the case study hub. Uh, we have tried to collect, uh, we have uh, 112 uh, case studies uh, that uh, they are uh, hosted by Opla, and you can see them uh, in uh, uh, the Think Nature uh, platform that uh, they are from all over the world, primarily from uh, Europe, uh, where you will be able to see uh, and get information on uh, each case study and see what are the problems that they have, what are the barriers, how they overcame them, and so forth. Uh, we also have a knowledge repository with a lot of information from uh, papers, journal papers, to videos, uh, to uh, reports, uh, and anything that it is related to uh, nature-based solutions. Uh, also, we have, uh, uh, this is part of uh, the uh, platform that we have to log in, is uh, uh, we have a dialogue, which is like a mini Facebook where you will be able to go and uh, post uh, your questions, you get information, and uh, people will be informed about, uh, and you can uh, uh, get answers uh, from the different stakeholders that uh, participate in the dialogue. So uh, the second thing that was the stakeholder engagement. Uh, this is, uh, uh, again, uh, the networking uh, uh, hub. I mean, these are all of the stakeholders that they are members of the platform. And uh, this is a number that it is increasing uh, uh, continuously. And it is very interesting because you will be able, you can search and find uh, people that uh, they are uh, related uh, uh, to uh, nature-based solutions uh, and uh, network uh, uh, with uh, a network with them. Uh, we have uh, a very, uh, uh, the engagement of the platform and the social media is uh, very uh, high. We have more than uh, 1,500 <coughs> unique visits in, uh, the, uh, in the, the platform and uh, the media. And you can see uh, here some of uh, the statistics of uh, the platform and the website. Uh, we have uh, created what we call the think and do tanks. And uh, the idea is that uh, uh, when uh, we started thinking about the proposal was that, uh, well, we need to create think tanks. OK, but uh, these tanks have to do something. So these are think and do tanks. So we divided Europe in uh, four climatic uh, zones uh, uh, because uh, there is, uh, when you are applying nature-based solutions, you have to take into consideration the local issues. And uh, in each of these uh, uh, zones, we have uh, created uh, uh, the local representatives and the think and do tag uh, members. Uh, and uh, uh, these uh, members uh, have been uh, participating together with a lot of other people in uh, the brainstorming forums that we had. We had two brainstorming forums. One was in uh, A Coruna uh, about a year, a year and a half ago. And uh, last uh, April, we had uh, the Paris uh, Forum on MBS. Uh, basically, we had uh, four major themes that we discussed. One was the sustainable utilization in cities the restoring degraded uh, ecosystem, climate change, uh, adaptation and mitigation, risk management and resilience. All of this information are available on the platform. I mean, you can have, uh, we have uh, posted uh, all of the presentations of uh, the Paris uh, Forum. This is a tremendous amount of information. And then, of course, as part of uh, the Think Nature Deliverables, we have summarized all of the outcomes of the discussion and the dialogue that we had uh, in these uh, two forums on these uh, four uh, specific uh, um, uh, uh, issues. Uh, another significant contribution uh, is uh, we produced uh, uh, four uh, reports that it was on uh, barriers and policy analysis. Uh, this is a uh, very significant report I mean, uh, that uh, uh, we use uh, uh, different ways of uh, approaching uh, them from uh, uh, questionnaires and uh, interviews uh, to significantly to a lot of uh, stakeholders where we try to summarize all of the barriers and then from there trying to pull out uh, uh, how we overcome the barriers 
uh, and uh, what are the drivers for using nature-based solutions and what kind of policy we need uh, to uh, use, uh, whether the policies are conflicting and so forth. Uh, these are some of the things that we will be discussing as we go through uh, in uh, this uh, um, summer school. Uh, the case study portfolio, uh, we have developed a template with a lot of information and uh, then uh, the case study owners, uh, and, uh, again, if you have a case study that you want to include, uh, you could, uh, uh, you could uh, uh, input it into showcases into the uh, Think Nature platform. We have 112 case studies. Uh, where we have uh, tried uh, to summarize the state of the art uh, uh, in uh, uh, nature-based solution applications. Uh, capacity building. Uh, the highlight of capacity building is uh, the Think Nature Handbook. This is the handbook that uh, you can uh, download, or you probably have already downloaded it from the platform. Uh, we have uh, tried to summarize all of the work that we have done, uh, we have uh, uh, been doing, and uh, uh, trying to give it a, a kind of a, a guidance on how to apply uh, nature-based solutions. Uh, the way that we have uh, um, designed the summer school is that uh, for today and tomorrow, we pretty much will be going through this uh, handbook. And uh, then we are going to try to apply uh, this information with hands-on examples uh, with the field trip on Wednesday and uh, then uh, the two case studies on Thursday and Friday. Uh, this is uh, another very interesting and very successful uh, webinars. We have uh, four webinars that are uploaded uh, on the web. Uh, this is uh, one and a half hour each. We had uh, more than 100, 150 people in each webinar participating uh, and uh, three presentations, uh, very, very useful to get uh, an overview on uh, the different aspects of uh, nature-based uh, solutions. Uh, in addition, we have an expert, uh, we have done uh, nine uh, expert interviews. And again, uh, those uh, uh, interviews, uh, they are on the platform. And uh, it is very interesting to try to hear uh, the perspective of nature-based solutions that uh, different people from science, policy, business, and authorities are uh, giving. And it's, uh, it's, it's interesting to see uh, how uh, the importance that they see each, uh, uh, each uh, interviewee on uh, using nature-based solutions. Uh, of course, uh, now we have uh, the summer school, uh, and uh, we hope that uh, it will be a memorable uh, uh, summer school. Um, and uh, uh, also we developed a mobile app a game uh, for uh, those that they would like uh, to play around and uh, uh, see uh, how to, to use uh, some of the considerations to use uh, uh, nature-based uh, solutions. And then, of course, uh, uh, we, uh, this is work in progress because this is part of the last uh, work uh, uh, of uh, um, uh, of uh, Think Nature. Uh, this is uh, the business case, the NBS business case. Uh, this is an analysis of the business case. There is a report that it is uh, available. Uh, the uh, framework has been developed in collaboration with a lot of different uh, projects uh, to try to identify the key elements of a strategic uh, business case of uh, NBS. And we are in the process uh, right now to apply it uh, to uh, exemplary uh, case studies and this is going to come up in another report before the end of uh, the project. So um, the, all of this information is on the platform and I urge you to uh, apply it. So the last uh, major activity that we have uh, uh, in uh, the project is the Bucharest Forum on NBS. Uh, we, it is still uh, open, uh, the registration is open. This is a two-day forum in October uh, that uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, dialogue and discussions and it will be very interesting because people from the Commission will come, they will discuss uh, the issues of Horizon uh, Europe. Uh, we will try to participate to shape in a dialogue uh, uh, format uh, to shape this Horizon uh, Europe and uh, the uh, issues that it will address. 
So uh, this is how we are going to do it. This is the uh, basically we have one and a half hour lectures. We'll have a coffee break. Uh, we will have a lunch uh, for and this will be the format of uh, the first uh, uh, two days. Uh, on uh, Wednesday we will start uh, in the morning with uh, the urban regeneration field trip. So you will take uh, a very nice walk all around uh, Hanya to see. Uh, uh, the area and try to get a feeling of uh, the town and uh, then on the Thursday you will uh, come back here and in groups you will be able to try to redesign different aspects and how you can revitalize Hanya. And uh, then uh, after lunch uh, we will uh, take uh, the bus and we will go to a watershed that it is about 25 kilometers away from here that has a major uh, erosion problems, we will discuss this. Uh, so we will spend a few hours in the watershed so you will see some of the different aspects of uh, the ecosystem restoration that we have. And then at uh, the end, at uh, 5, 5.30, whenever we are done from the field trip, uh, we are going to go um, uh, to a place that is about uh, 13, 15 kilometers uh, from here. Uh, it is uh, by the beach. It is a very nice uh, tavern uh, where we are going to have, uh, um, I would call it a gala dinner, but uh, not a gala dinner uh, that, uh, I mean, it is by the beach and it will be, uh, we will have singing, dancing and all of the stuff that uh, will bring us together and uh, 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 create uh, a, a group that can work together uh, in the next two days uh, to try to redesign and apply nature-based solutions. So, um, and uh, of course you have seen uh, the program of uh, the last uh, two days where we will have the applications. So, uh, this is a kind of a very quick uh, overview of, uh, nature, of uh, Think Nature. I urge you that you all join uh, the uh, platform and uh, we can uh, continue from uh, uh, here with uh, uh, the first presentation uh, will be given uh, by uh, Stephanie and uh, uh, it will be a kind of an inspiration uh, presentation of uh, what is uh, being done in the uh, one of the European uh, projects. Uh, so, uh, Stephanie, please. Uh, uh, 